All right, I got a mark on here. Let's gonna put another light on here. Uh, oh man, it's so hard to get around from this shit. Uh, okay. All right, we're cutting the uh, hair over six and a quarter wide to allow for the blade. So we leave the line. So, um, let's see. Leave the line. and a quarter exactly so that's why I always allow six and a quarter you probably cannot see that take my word for it if you would please six and a quarter all right so that gives us that gives us the two sides so what I got to do now is six and three eighths high cut them off two of them out of here and we're set up for the top. Now we can't make a top out of this, but I say well wood as I told you. So we got a big piece over here that we can get the top out of when the time comes. And what I'm going to do is I was originally, well it's got a wicked bow in it already. That's not the way it was when I put it in here. not good. I was standing up in here in the corner. Oh. All right, so now what we got to do, before we mess around with this rip fence, we're going to cut a length for the top. I'll go outside and I'll measure six and three eight inches down for the height out of here but we won't cut them because I have to offset the rip fence it's set for exactly this so I want the top to match so when the top goes on it'll be the same uh, width as this 
All right, I did the rip cut off camera. Oh, damn it, I gotta go get my glasses. All right, now I can move the rip vent off the table and uh, Mita gauge, yeah, here it is. All right, I'll get this piece of wood put over here for now. Now we can right, this is the top. I've got it six and a quarter by twelve and a half. Now it's about 12 and a quarter, but I'm allowing extra for the quarter inch Luan, and I'll probably have to trim it off a little bit. So, let's see. Always want to leave the line. Okay. Alright, this is the Let me double check myself here. Oh, oh it's not easy working in this shed. Oh. These are shot. Everything's shot on me. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm cutting the proper end of the board. Perfect. Just a hint of a line on here. Alright, so that's the top. Don't look that big, does it? All right, this is an extra piece. Now we're going to go and get the other two that I've already got marked out. And i got to put these and label them because I, I've done this before. I've made pieces and put them aside and didn't mark them and ended up cutting up with something else and screw up my work and I had to go out and buy more wood. So this is the top. We're going to mark it top. This is scuffed up here, so this will be the inside. We're marking the top. You don't have to see me do that. All right, I got two marks here. I don't know if you can see. The light isn't all that good in here. All right, so this is a hair over. That's how I measure things. A hair over or a hair under. <laughs> a hair over six and uh, three-eighths here here okay here we got to cut on the line we got to cut the line so that we divide equally with the blade allow for the blade thickness it could still be off a little tiny bit but I don't think anybody's going to take a, a microscope and look at it matter of fact there's going to be a lot of imperfections on this job so the first thing we are going to do, I can keep my wood level here, is try to get the cut right on the line with my piss poor eyesight here. Looks like the blade is centered. Gotta cut this right in the dead center. And we're working close to the edge of the miter gauge here.
This mitre gauge I got at a yard sale, I think Jewett City. For the longest time I could not get a mitre gauge for this table saw that I bought at a yard sale years ago, 10 inch delta. But I got one and the one I got fits right in. It's got the little um, catches on it so that you can pull it out like this. You probably can't see that. Uh, and it won't fall off. Alright, so let's see if we can get a center cut here. Make sure the blade don't hit this one. It'll screw it up. The other piece that it hit, not a big deal. I'm not using that. Okay, but these, yes. So let's see how how close did this goat come? Pretty darn close. Let's go out and see how far off I am. I think you're in camera. If you're not, well, sorry. Okay. Six and a quarter? Exactly. Bye. Six and three eighths. All right, so the green is going this way. You got to remember that. So it's going to be a side like this. And as I said on the earlier part of the video, we're flushing it out to the front. So we're going to have a little bit of an overhang on the sides, a little overhang on the top, and another little overhang on, on this side. Because we have to improvise and somehow blend the plastic front into this. And I'm hoping this stuff might do it in here, but if not, this stuff is cheap enough if I can get a smaller one, maybe a quarter inch, so it'll go in here. So the first thing I want to do here, this is the inside. I gotta mark them. Six and three eighths. All right. So uh Top. Nobody's going to see that. It wouldn't be the first time that I've marked things like this and screwed up and put this on the outside like a finish. This has the good finish on it. This is scuffed up from the table saw, you know. So, all right. So, we have got. Exactly, but I'm still going to double check. All right, so here's some scuffing here, so that's the inside. And we are six and one quarter wide, which is what we want. And six and three eighths tall. Top. Okay, now, this will be one side here. Um, Got to nail it, but we're going into the plywood edgewise, so it should go in easier than nailing this way into the plywood. And we only need three nails. The glue will hold it once it sets up. Now, before we do that, 
we got this half inch. This is supposed to be half inch. Yep. Half inch square stock. That I want to lay on the top. Inside panels. So when I put the top on, there'll be something for the top to fasten to. In other words, here's the top. See what I mean? If I don't lock them, this is the top here. You don't want to. You don't want to do this, okay? It's not going to be strong. You need something in the corner because I'm going to glue, not nail, I'm going to glue this piece on the inside top of each of these sides. I'm going to cut it, glue it, and clamp it. I'm not putting nails in it. Down at the bottom, I have no choice. I got to nail it. But you're not going to notice it down there so much. Not easy working with these small nails. Very, very hard for me to see. They're going in straight and up. out here but I don't own one and I don't have any room in the shed either for one I'm going to bend the nail over. Gets down far enough, then I'm safe. You got a shadow with the sun on the nail, and it looks like the nail is bending over, but it's not. But it is on an angle. Good, that's what we want. We want it even with the front, so there'll be a little bit of an overhang on the sides and on the top. Now we go and we put the other one on, and we got the nails already in it. What we do is get some glue. Very nice day today. If it wasn't for the damn wind, it would be pretty good. Glue 
on the surface of the wood. Don't like that because it won't take a stain. the top fits perfectly. I don't have to do anything other than make the cleats. So this is the back. That's why I didn't cut that. We need there we need to put the cleat on. But before we can make the cleat to go on the inside of this, whether I put the cleat here or whether I put them here, it don't matter. It's going to be they're going to match in anyways. Um, I have to know where the radio sits in the cabinet, so I got to bring this back into the shop, and I'll do that off camera. Set the radio in here and see where my plastic grill ends and draw a line on it and that way I'll know how long to make the cleat from this material here. Alright, let me take you down here and show you what we have to do. Alright, I put the radio in here, it slid in nicely. This is 90 degrees, so it's here, okay? The problem is, even though this sits 90, this looks like it's bowed out here and bowed out there, but that's the way the grill is made on the radio. So the radio grill, or the bottom of the radio, fits snug here, and there's about a quarter inch of space, or almost a quarter inch here, and about an eighth inch here. So we're going to need some of this molding on the outside, because the radio is going to be slid out this way. So you don't want to put the molding in here, you, you'll still see the gap. You want the molding on the outside. So that'll be the last thing, or one of the last things to do. Now, as far as the cleat is concerned, and I'm walking in mud here, because I don't have the cardboard on this side of the bench, you can't see that marker. That's a quarter inch. The back is a quarter inch plywood, okay? So the back is gonna go on, and is gonna have to sit flush, with this. In other words, it's not going to be mounted on the side here. It's going to be flush. And so I need to cut this cleat and back it away from the back of the unit a quarter of an inch. And here is the inside of where the plastic front of the radio is, the grill, comes right here. So I need to cut this stick back at a quarter inch on the right side and cut it where our black mark is. So there'll be a cleat here and a cleat here on the inside. So I don't disturb this glue because there's only three little tiny nails holding it. And it very easily could be bumped and, and break the seal until the glue dries. I'm gonna put the cleat on the top. It don't matter whether it's on the top or the bottom, on the sides I should say, because either way the cleats are going to end up here. So I just have to mark the back and the front of the top. So this is the inside of the top, this will be the back. Okay, so my cleat has got to be quarter inch in here and where that black mark is that I showed you on the sides over here. So the cleat will be mounted here. Now, 
you also have to take into consideration the sides are coming up. What you want to do, and let me take you over back over here again. This is the back, this is the inside. As it sits, this fits perfect. Perfect. All right. So what you want to do, and the best way to do that, is to flush this out, which is pretty well flush now, and this flush out. Take a pencil or a pen, in my case, and draw a line here, okay? So you've got a quarter inch back set over here. That's where your cleat's gonna be, okay? Now, you wouldn't normally have to worry about that if I wanted to put the cleats on the ends here, but I don't want to stress these pieces. I would have to wait for it to dry overnight before I can do that, and I don't like waiting for things. That's just me, I never did like waiting. I like, it's like when I paint something. You're supposed to wait 24 hours for maybe uh, like the rust neutralizer. I don't wait 24 hours, I paint almost right away. It's just the way I do it, I don't like waiting. <laughs> because the weather may not be good the next day. So anyways, so, so you can see, I gotta back set that to the black mark. Now there will be a cleat on the inside of the back going this way so I can fasten the back to it. It'll be this material here. But I gotta double check the clearance because there's a loop stick I think it's on this side, but anyways, that I have to make sure that the loop stick clears the cleats that I have. If for some reason it don't, then I might have to go into this material, which I've got enough of, and use those for cleats. But you do have to have some kind of a cleat. You just can't fasten it this way. It'll just break in handling. So let me get to work on this and I'll come back on the video shortly here. All right, folks, I'm done for the day. I'm gonna take you in the shop and show you what I did. I glued uh, two of those strips, the half inch square strips, cleats on the inside of the top. I'll show you that. That concludes the video for today because I have to let that glue set up as well as the glue on the sides and so forth. So I'll take you inside the shop. All right, as you can see here, I got these glued and they're backspaced so that they'll accommodate the um, front here. So the cleat will be from here to here and here to here. And it apparently clears the loop stick over here, so I think I'm okay. Um, there's going to be a problem getting the radio out if I put a cleat on the back. Um, I can't really put this down because it's not dry yet. But this is the back of it. You can see where I drew a, a line backspaced about a quarter inch. But if I put that cleat from here to here, when I slide this radio out, this top will hit that cleat going out. So that's gonna be a problem. I tried tilting the chassis like this and it really didn't work out too good. But when this dries and I get the top glued on, I will attempt to See if I can make uh, a cleat to at least try in there, somehow hold it in and try to pull the radio out. The only thing that's going to be removable, besides the radio of course, out of this case is going to be the back. So the back is going to recess in here as I said, and it's going to come up against these two cleats here but I really wanted to get one across there so I can put some tiny screws in there to hold it. 
Worst case scenario, I can leave the back open. I don't really like to do that. I think it looks pretty darn good. The, the knobs um, work after I groove these out a little bit. Uh, this is what I'm talking about here and here. So a cleat of this type can be glued here, right down to here. As long as it clears this, I really don't like to do that. I, I could end it here, but then you still got a space here. I'm not too worried about this. The plastic comes right up against the side, but the black metal in the back where the numbers are on does not touch this. So you can see a space there. But I think a trim here down to here will look pretty good once I get the top on so that we know exactly where to put it. And if you look, there's a little angle. It's more space here than there is here. So it's sloped back just a little bit. This wood is cut square, so there's no problem there with it. And you've still got that little slope here. And the top will come right even with the corner of this come out. And <clears throat> I can't put the top on right now uh, because of these clamps. So I guess upside down, which is not really going to tell you much. I don't need any trim underneath that. fits perfectly. It's upside down, of course, if you understand. It's upside down, but we don't need to put any uh, trim under here. We just put it here and here. Thanks for watching.